Hey, hello again. Well, I'm out along the Puyallup River. It's real near home. Just uh, looking for a place to set up and do a painting. Since I'm near home, I think I'll do a little larger painting and maybe come back to it uh, over a couple days if I need to. I've hiked along this river a number of times. There's some nice trails. It's pretty cold and muddy, so a little uncomfortable at the moment to get set up, but I think as the sun rises, it'll warm up a bit. I like how this pool of still water is reflecting some of the background trees. I may exaggerate that a little bit, make it a little bit bigger, make the reflection a little bit bigger, make this spit of gravel a little smaller. I also want to play with the background there. I think I'll remove this cable tower and just make it more of a, a forested hill. Bump up the bluish lavender I'm seeing with the early morning fog and bump up the, the oranges. The fall leaves are kind of past peak. A lot of them have fallen with some recent wind and rain we got. But there's still enough there for me to get the idea of the color. There's kind of a neat smokiness um, smoky effect almost that I get as the leaves fall as the trees lose their leaves there's a beautiful misty ethereal quality to that background so I want there to be you know two distinct layers this is kind of the middle ground this big tree here with that pool of water this foreground will be pretty abstract and rough and then the background. So I'm gonna get set up. I did a little sketching after my last walk to kind of get an idea what I want to paint. There's quite a bit of road noise here. There's a pretty busy road with a lot of big trucks. So I'm not sure how much commentary I'll do. As always, thanks so much for joining me. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Going with a 16 by 20 inch oil primed linen panel from Centurion with a little larger panel today since it's a nice quiet spot, relatively quiet, relatively comfortable, close to home. So I can get as far as I want to today and then maybe come back again tomorrow and, and keep going at about the same time of day. Quick rundown on my palette. Nice and cool, there's a little bit of breeze, so I'm gonna use turpentine for the initial sketch and the initial wash. I love using turpentine just because it creates really neat abstract effects in the initial wash. It's different from Gamsol. You can use Gamsol, and I do when it's hot or still, but I love using turpentine in that, in that initial wash. Once I have the wash down, I'll put the turpentine away and get the Gamsol out. What I'm looking for in that initial wash is an interesting Gaiyu pattern, a, a composition that pulls me in, makes me excited to continue. So I don't copy exactly what I'm seeing in the scene. I try to take that as initial inspiration and then move on from there. I've got some Neil McGilpin here. I'll use, I'll use a little bit of that gambling medium in each mix to create a buttery consistency for the paint. This is M. Graham Titanium White, which is pretty buttery to begin with. A really nice titanium white paint, the artist grade. I've also got a little bit of Windsor & Newton fast drying under painting titanium white. That'll help this to set up so that I can continue tomorrow and it'll be pretty much dry by then. It may have some wet spots if the paint is thick, but it'll be a little easier to continue tomorrow. Plain air if the painting is pretty much set up. Ivory black, cold gray. Cold gray is just 50% ivory, ivory black and 50% white. This is a shortcut. I just use little amounts, tiny amounts of these to deaden or shift the value slightly. So if I have a, a color mix and it's a little too light and a little too vibrant, I can add just a little bit of one of these and shift it slightly toward the dull. It's just a shortcut. You, you don't need them on your palette, and I don't ever really paint with straight 
black or gray or white for that matter. I always add it to other mixtures. Cerulean blue, got a little bit of phthalo blue here because the rivers, especially this Puyallup River, when the sun hits it, it turns a, a beautiful emerald green and a little tiny amount of that phthalo with some cad yellow and white really creates that intense green but a little bit of that phthalo goes a long way ultramarine blue sap green burnt umber burnt sienna lizard and crimson cad red cad yellow windsor lemon gambling radiant lemon and yellow ochre i don't know if i need all these but i i set them out just in case i've got nice generous piles out big piles of paint because it's a bigger panel, so I'm going to need to mix up bigger pools. As usual, this is going to be an exercise in simplification, so I don't wanna to try to capture every single tree back there. There's too many, and they make kind of a regular fence line. So what I wanna do is group that middle set of trees together into a big shape and then add just a few trunks, not in a uniform way, but in a random way. Same thing with this background. I don't wanna to try to paint every tree I see up there. Rather, I want kind of a big shape and then carve in just a little suggestion of, of tree by manipulating the shadow in the sun. Beautiful, bright tree here. Again, this will be kind of one big shape and then I'll, then I'll just carve into it with shadow shapes. The line of the light on the water will be a shape. The water in the shadow reflecting cool water, that calm water reflecting the trees in the sky will be one big flat smooth shape. And then some rocks here in the foreground. These foreground trees as well, just one big shape and then carve in a little bit of detail. I'll start with a small bristle brush and turpentine and do the sketch. I'm going to place the big shapes on the panel just quickly and roughly. I'm not too worried about the drawing at this point. I just want a guide for when I'm doing the turpentine wash. Right, there's the quick sketch in. I've got the big shapes, the background mountain, these foreground or middle ground fall colored trees, the foreground trees, the river coming in, the bank of the river. So now I'll go in and with a big bristle brush, I'll do a quick turpentine wash. If the wash cooperates, if it sets up kind of quick, I'll, I'll add more pigment in certain areas. I'll add more paint, get a little bit of a, little bit of a built up value pattern. If it's not setting up, if it's just slipping and sliding around, then I'll stop messing with it. I'll erase away some lightest lights, get to a value pattern that I can believe in, and get on to mixing the full colors for the scene. In the turpentine wash phase, I'm almost treating it like a watercolor using very diluted paint and letting the turpentine wash create interesting gradients and scrubby, transparent shapes. When I like something, I pursue it. I add more pigment or take pigment away to develop the composition. In this way, it's kind of like a no-tan that you're doing on the fly, connecting all the dark shapes and playing with abstract patterns.
Alright, there's the turpentine wash in. That took me about 15 minutes or so. I'm gonna move on to mixing the, the full colors. The lighting is beautiful right now out there. So I want to try to capture the, the colors now. I could go further on the wash and it would actually be kind of fun to continue to add paint and take away paint. But I'm kind of wanting to move on to mixing the colors. I'll try to minimize the number of pools of color. That's been a theme in my recent videos is to try to work from fewer pools and just bend those pools to what I need by adding by either by mixing in more color from the tube or mixing and max mixing the color between the, the pools that I mix or by adding white or gray or black. So for the colors I'll mix up one or two values for the sky, really high value, probably just cerulean blue, maybe a touch of ultramarine blue, maybe a touch of yellow. For the background hills, I'm going to bend that a little bit more blue than I'm seeing here in person. It's pretty, it seems pretty warm when I look at it, but when I focus my eyes in this area, which will be kind of the center of interest area, a real high value light against the dark. Uh, when I look at that, then these shadows here and the shadows here, they turn more blue, more lavender. So that's the way I'll push it. So I'll need a trees in the background in the sun, trees in the background in the shadow. Both of them will be pushed toward the blue. Then I'll need this high value orange which isn't a straight cadmium orange, it's it's a slightly greener and grayer than that. And then I can use that one pool then by adding red and greens and lavenders. I can bend it to get the other, other fall color trees. I'll need a nearer pine tree in the sun color, a little more intense green than what I have up here. Then I'll need a little bit of white water, which is white with a touch of alizarin crimson, maybe a touch of radiant lemon as well. This band of electric blue, which will be white with mainly ultramarine, maybe a touch of alizarin. Then I can just use those pools of color that I mixed for the background for the reflection in the water and I'll just smooth it down and gray it down just a bit. I'll need a little darker foreground shadow. There's a brownish shadow and a bluish shadow and a dark green for the pine trees here in the foreground. And I think that'll be it. I can use the, the sky color that I mix, darken it just a little bit to create the reflection here. Here are the colors I mixed up. I tried to mix up big piles so I don't have to try to remix the color. I've got, well, I've got these sky colors here, a little darker, a little lighter, and then I mixed up one value darker for the darkest blue of the water where it's reflecting the sky. It's a little darker than the sky itself, so I set it over here so I could compare the values. This may be a little dark, but I want it to read as in shadow. And then as, as the water comes out of the shadow, I can use some of these sky colors as well for the reflected sky. As it comes closer to me, it's getting into the sun. Then I've got that background hill, greenish lavender, darker, lighter. This is maybe a little too dark. I'm gonna put it on there it may be a little too dark against the sky. I'll have to play with it. I can always add a little bit of this blue to it to lighten it and push it back. Then trees in the middle ground, the pine trees, the dark of the trunk and the shadow and the light. And then I've got some fall colors, a little more red, a little more yellow. And I can bend those by adding white or some of the primary colors from the tube. Then I've got this really intense yellow-green 
That's Thalo Blue plus Gamblin Radiant Lemon and White. And I need to mix up one more color, the white water, where the sun is hitting the the rapids. It's a titanium white with cad yellow where it's closer to me and it's titanium white with just a touch of alizarin crimson as it moves further away. Let's start with this number six rosemary ultimate bristle and paint the sky in. And I'll just continue with this to paint the background trees and then just keep moving forward. I'm gonna try to use as big a brush as I can. I've got one other large rosemary. This is a number seven evergreen. I think I'll save it and use it for some of the higher value big shapes. Dip my brush in just a little bit of Gamsol at first just to help the paint slide off. I'll start with this highest value sky color down on the horizon. Painting in moderate shade here makes it a little bit harder to gauge value and color. Maybe I'll try to turn my panel just a little bit to catch a little more sun. sun is over here, so this side of the sky is going to be lighter than this side. So I can use just a touch of this darker watercolor over on this side to indicate that value shift, color shift. I'm going to continue to use the same brush and paint the sky reflected in the water. I'll start down here, which is pretty high value. Just a touch of the lizard seems like it's just a little redder in some of the reflected areas down here. And then as it moves this direction, it gets just a little darker. And as it moves this direction, it gets a little darker. Painting the background, I'm sticking with the colors I pre-mixed 
not bothering to clean my brush between colors, trying to create a soft gradient shifting from warm on the left to cool on the right, based on what I'm seeing in the scene. I want these colors to stay back, so for the warm background color, I'll use alizarin crimson. I think that's as far as I want to go today. The light is changing the scene quite a bit. It's becoming much more backlit. So I'm just going to make sure everything is nice and smooth, no ridges. That way I can start on it, start it in on it tomorrow. I'll scrape the pools of paint I have there down onto my glass palette. Spray just a little bit of Gamsol across them to help keep them nice and moist. Leave it in my truck for the night. It's getting cold at night, so it should be a should keep the paint nice and moist. As always, thanks so much for joining me. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, please visit my website. I sell these little plain air pieces at a reasonable price because I consider them practice. It really you can makes also me sign happen up when someone likes my art enough. Stay up to date on my new work and shows and get a discount on original art and prints.